Oh, and thanks for tuning in to part two. In part one, which was called Sneaky Web Viewer Widgets in Claris FileMaker Color Picker for Mac OS, I showed you how to create this file. This is a color picker that when the user selects a value from the color picker will populate a corresponding field in FileMaker. Also, then if a user enters a value into a field, it'll show that in the color picker as well. So there's a couple things to it, but really only one of the objects is necessary here for all this to work, and that is the web viewer object. So I thought this would be really cool if I created an add-on. So really a color picker add-on. And I uh, went through a couple of steps to be able to do that, and I wanted to share those with you here. So first of all, this is the stripped down version of the file. And when I talk about stripped down, there's a couple of things that are important to remember. When you create an add-on, any tables or fields or uh, tables that are used as the context for a layout in our case, or fields that are used as part of the grouped object, all those are gonna get be uh, rebuilt as part of the add-on. So here, I didn't want any fields, I didn't want any tables, I do want some scripts, uh, but I really just want the web viewer object and a couple of scripts. So the trick here was you create a table and then go into your manage database and delete the table and delete the table occurrences. And that way uh, the table reference will be uh, unknown, you see in this case, which is great because now it won't bring a table over it because all the user would have to do is just delete that table and field and map it to their own. So that's a little trick here. Also, the layout name is really important. This is the name of the layout. This is a very specific syntax that's required in order to be able to generate an add-on. Additionally, I also have a couple of scripts. Now, I made some modifications to these scripts. First of all, you'll see here in my set field script step, I'm no longer setting to a field because that field is missing. I did put a note here to the user that that's where they pick the field that they want to map to in their solution. I did the same thing here in this other script where uh, I'm using the that same field as the parameter. So the user will encounter an error if they try to run these scripts, and I just wanted to uh, make it really obvious that they can see that, and I even put some messaging in there. Now the last thing that we want to do is we have to take all the objects that we want to have as part of our add-on and group them together. Now in my case, I only have a single object, but you can't group a single object, so this little trick here, I'm actually going to take the text object I just created and the web viewer object, and I'm going to group them together and you see that they've created a group and I'll just go into the text one and delete it and it now I have a grouped web viewer. Now there's a pretty common technique where in order to create an add-on you'll notice that there's a script that you have to run. A script step called save a copy as add-on package where you call out the name of the window and whether or not you want to replace the UUIDs which I have turned on. So what I did is I created a separate file and I'm going to call the script in this file. And the reason is because if I created the script that creates the add-on in this file, it becomes part of the add-on. A little weird, uh, so I wanted to avoid that experience for the user, so I'll create the second uh, file that just uh, does a perform script based on the window name selected. That's my window name, and I will run it by hitting this button. So then what FileMaker does is it pops up and shows you the location where it saved your add-on. Now these files here, that's it. That's your add-on. Not a whole heck of a lot to it. You'll notice that it's inside of your uh, library folder under Application Support, FileMaker, Extensions, and Add-on Modules. So all the add-ons uh, will be located there. Now something else that you'll notice that there's a couple of different files here. You see that we've got icon, icon at two times, preview, and even a uh, info underscore English JSON file. What I've done is I've created different versions of these. So I've opened up the original info underscore English JSON file and I've gone in and I've made my own descriptions and changed some of the text there. And then I've saved that uh, to another location. Also, there is a preview.png, an icon, uh, two icon files. And what I did is I went in and I looked to see what the actual size is that's required in the resolution. So 288, 288 at 72. Uh, DPI resolution and these are the same they're both 96 96 at 72 so both of those are the same and I created my own and in the case of a color picker this is what I wanted to have as the preview and as the icons so what I did is then I take those files that I created I'm gonna drag those into the add-on folder and replace the ones that are in there alright now you see those updated there's my preview and my two icons so at this point what I'm going to do is quit FileMaker and I'm going to open FileMaker back up 
and in this case I'm going to use the file that I want to add my add-on into and we'll navigate over to an asset layout you see I have this field here for the color of the assets you like for example this bike is silver I'd like to store the hex value there so I'm going to go into layout mode and resize a little bit here because we'll use a couple of these and you'll notice over here that we do not have any add-ons added so that's the first thing I need to do is add the add-on I just created so if I scroll down here you'll see that I have my first icon when I select it I have my preview it shows the the values that I actually put in here the name of it uh, the scripts that are actually created and a little bit of a description so I hit choose so first just pausing for a second what actually just happened was everything that was part of my add-on which is really just the object that I'll add to the layout in a second but mostly these two scripts they were added to the file now I didn't get any new tables added which is great so I don't have to worry about deleting any of those but sometimes you might have to do that so in this case we, we made it nice and clean so let me just go update these two scripts if we remember the first one was going to be the parameter I happen to have a field called color in my assets table so I'm going to map to that so that one's all set so I'll go ahead and save it and we'll go to the next one where I need to pick what the target field is so we'll go back to that same assets color field and then the last thing I'm going to do is uh, assign those two scripts to the uh, to the uh, the script triggers you can go learn about why that's important in the previous video if you'd like to I'm really just mimicking the functionality that's necessary I could have put all of these instructions in the description as well too now the last thing I'm going to do is drag this object over and this is why I like to talk about sneaky web viewer widgets this is really just a tiny little web viewer or a color picker widget so I'm going to make sure that I mimic the auto sizing to make sure that it floats along with the other objects and all the other stuff I would do with the same object so here I am I'm on a silver bike so let's go ahead and pick let's try to find a silver right there and sure enough it uh, works just as we expected it to do and even if I have another value in there and a user goes and types in a silver hex it updates my color picker so thanks for checking out how to take the sneaky web viewer widget for the color picker create an add-on so that you can add it to other files as you see here we added it inside an assets file and remapped it to a field inside the assets table called color thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed this and have fun making your own add-ons